maybe you won't even know. Okay, so first step, user studies. We're going to go through all of these before we're done. about user behavior, what do they do when they want I can't do this class without spending at least some decent energy on users because that's in the end what it's all about. This class is not primarily about users, but if we don't start from users, we're going to have absolutely no idea what to do. And this is a great lesson for you when you're in a meeting someday and everyone's talking about what we should do and not a single person has mentioned the user, has mentioned the people who are using it. And it's always a really, you know, an easy winner to say, well, you know, you have opinion A, you have opinion B. What do the users want to have happen? And that's a really good tiebreaker. So let me give you the the, base, the, the idea here. All of our together to serve you. That's why when I when I talked about early on in this um, in this class, I talked about the idea of navigation and how we think that we're moving through cyberspace. I said to me a, a metaphor that I like better. Anybody remember what the metaphor I like better is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like a restaurant. A restaurant where the waiter is the server, and you order from the menu. Literally, you, you pick from the menu, you order what you want, and they deliver it up to you. And you get as many courses as you want. Who is that? Anybody know? You guys too young for this? You should totally go back and see this on Hulu. This is one of the greatest television shows of all time. What is it? MASH. And what's the guy's name? Dr. Radar? Radar. This guy's name is Radar O'Reilly. And this guy, to me, was this guy, he was just a corporal, right? And he worked for a major or somebody like that. And the major would say, Raider, I want, and Raider would say, Raider, I want, and there was who knew how to serve the major before the use of example about what any information system in the entire universe has to do. Anticipate the needs of its users and deliver the information to them in a form that they can use it, maybe even before they even know they need it. Now contrast that with what most people think their job is. Most people think their job is to build a machine that creates a website. And if I build a machine that creates a website, everything is done. That would be like this guy saying to his commanding officer, well, Everything you need, commanding officer, is sitting over there in those file cabinets. My job is done. Right? I, I got it all. I put it somewhere. 
and now my job is done. And the commanding officer would be like, I have no idea. I didn't even know there were file cabinets. And you're expecting me to go to that file cabinet and find the right drawer and the right folder and pull out the right thing that I need? No, that's your job. You have the file cabinet. You get the file cabinet all well organized, and I'm just sitting here waiting for the rest of the paper to show up in front of my face. That would be the analogy. And the analogy in the modern world is, I built a website, it's all on there, it's all really well organized, what's the problem? I'm done. It's all good. Because everything is somewhere. Well, that's the problem. Because most people have no idea where that's somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah, time enough for just a really quick tale. So I was just last week in... Uh, And they have a website, and they had exactly this idea. Only nobody in the network has a tax website. Even though you have a tax website, you'll see that everything is all in the right place. It's all really nicely organized. The problem is, nobody knows where that place is. If you happen to know, it would be all good, but they don't know. So websites and understand that there's no right That's the one, that's what we're going to focus on. In order to do that, you got to know those people. you got to know them better maybe than they know. And you can do that. you got to know more than them about what it is they're looking for. And then you got to give them what they want, but as important as giving them what they want, you got to give them what they don't even know. And there's another problem with new information systems today. If you go to Google, it'll give you what you want. The only problem is, is a lot of times you don't know what you want. You have some vague idea of what you want, and you protect it before you never get there because if you don't already know what you want to get, so we want to be able to help people more than simply just if you type in some words and you know what you want, I'll give you back what you what, what you're looking for. Because people don't always know what they're looking for. All right, main point. Every information system is there to serve people, and the paradigm is this guy, Radar, who gets information to his officer before the officer even knows that he needs it. All right. Two big ideas of behavior. We're going to tie into those, those ideas, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. I want you to actually work it out, as opposed to... idea of how someone is going to know it and know how to get it. The first rule is find the information you need. What do these people need? Then you figure out what it is that they would do to find that information. And then you put the information that you need the public. It's as easy as that, conceptually. Really difficult in practice, and that's what you guys are going to do. That's where we're going, and that's what I want to get you started doing today, next week. All right. This is called design criteria. This has to deliver what people want, the way they want it, and the way they'll find it. And this one is usually in a way they'll find it. And I described this website where everything was nicely organized, it was all in the right place, but nobody could find it. So it's as if it wasn't there. That's what you got to do, and here's how to do it. This idea of an information deliverable in the um, in the forward engineering process. And you guys all know what a, a regular persona is, and here's kind of a, an example of a, of a sort of a picture of a person, and then and the idea is when you get to know the show, you can build a better show. Right? That first idea is to get to know the people. And personas are like somebody like Michelle.
um, statistics about her and her technical to do when she needs that education. And what does that mean? And notice again, this slide here, it's dividing by life cycle. So we have Michelle, and uh, the general problem here is Michelle's looking for a car. And she's going to decide on what car to buy her lifestyle. We're going to turn that around, and we're going to say, She needs to buy the coolest car. Lifestyle is going to determine what kind of car she buys. And now what exactly it is it is looking for. She's looking to find the coolest car for her. And we'll define what a cool car is. But I want to see her right down. Find me the coolest car. I want to be and how can I purchase myself in this car? And if you check the car website, you're not doing that. This is all about the car, but you're not telling about the car in relation to who you are. So we have to have a way of getting into the car thing through the car that suits our lifestyle and we can do a radically better job than most people. So we figured all this out. And by the way, I'm just making
My, one of my favorite professors said that the best
I want to get you to that information for some. So here's a template. And you can use my template or you can, you can make your own template for this, uh, for this part of your exercise. But you have to write down everything that you sent to. Here's a template. I'm going to name it. You can do Picture is always good, so we can still have the picture. You know, maybe it's a little big. Um, not, and, and so you can start with uh, more for Not so much text heavy. And as you, and as you know from, from your other personas, the focus is on the least amount to get you to feel like you know this person. And there's the name of the person. We give the and then we get a short information. So there's your template. There's how you're going to work forward. Oh, I'm actually doing pretty good. Okay, so. Okay, so you want people who would like to choose the same sort of one that you would like to choose. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Anybody else? Like, what do you think?
See who, who wants to do those topics? Well, I won't be assigning the topics. I'll be assigning the teams, and the teams get to figure out what the topic is. If you get to figure it out. Yeah. So let me, let, me, let me walk through this, and that will maybe give you a better idea of what's going on. So, like, let's see these three people. That team right over there. You guys are the team. You guys are the user. All three of these randomly selected people have awesome. And they'll later on in the course. So every team people also had it reduced. Try to figure out a common need for all three of those users. information. information need part, these are some things to consider. Why do they want this? What's the point? What's the purpose? What are they trying to accomplish by having this information? Are they going to use something, do they want to find one? 
finding one, like that's what I used in this example, finding a car, that's only one thing people might want to do. They also might want to complete a task. They have something they need to do, and your, your information is getting them to the, to the completion of that task. Notice how that's really different. Finding one, that's the car thing, but I need to complete a task, like for example, you know, um, you might find that, that, that you want to create a, a, a programming aid. So I need to learn new things on JavaScript next quarter, and they want the killer JavaScript reference. I want to get them exactly to the right piece of JavaScript information. I wouldn't use that because there's lots of them out there now, but that's a possibility. They're trying to get something done, and your information is going to help you get that done. Are they trying to learn something? There's something that they want to, they want to know that they don't know now? Are they trying to pass information on to others? important one is often really overlooked that most of the time the people you get information from are other people then got it from somewhere else. That I was just on a couple of weeks ago, we looked at this. We said in every office you have around the world, there are people who really are interested in policies and procedures of all information and there are people who care less. But everybody has to behave. Everybody has to fill in their so how do you get them to fill in their expense reports? Do you try to get everybody to go to the web page that says how to fill out an expense report? Get the expense report information to one or two people in the office, then everybody asks. See the idea? I'm going to deliver my expense report information to the one or two people who are the go-to people in each office, and then they're going to redistribute it to all the end users. They're equal intermediaries. They're huge. They're so important that it's that you'd be crazy not to understand that those are all focused on getting information from the end user, but if you understand that the end user not always look for information from systems, but instead from people, then you'll find the people that you should deliver the information to so that the end users can go to those people and get it from them. So they may be actually passing the information on to other people. All right. What do they want? Overviews, facts, procedures, advice? What basic kinds of information do they want? How much do they know about this stuff already? Are they experts? So we put Michelle in the total newbie category, right? She didn't know squat about cars. What if we had another persona and it was a it was a total gearhead? Completely different idea, because the gearhead already knows a ton about it, a ton of information, and they're gonna look at the stuff we produce for Michelle and say, Yeah, no way, I don't want that. I want I want more geared down information. What rational need is this serving? What emotional need is this important? Where I live. So in the Michelle example, for example, in the Michelle example, she wants something that feels right. It's not, a, it's not about her thinking through the car. We realize that, and so we're going to produce something that makes her feel about the car. That was the idea of putting her in the car waving at you, right? Nothing's going to make her feel right about the car as much as actually seeing herself in the car. That's not a rational thing. That's an emotional thing. And information has both of these components, a rational component of allowing you to think it through, and an emotional component where it just feels right. right? So, all right. Um, how are they going to judge a good one from a bad one? You want to give them good information, but what do they think is good? How are they going to know whether they trust the thing? whether it really appeals to them, the style and the tone, and whether they think it's the right one. It's the one they really want to have. So this, is, this should get you started on your interview questions for um, information need. And I want you to really sort of at first start really high level when you're talking to people and, and just kind of get from them what's important in their life, what kind of things that are they trying to accomplish in their lives, um, what, what stage are they at in their lives, and what can I do to help them get further along in their own lives. All right, information behavior. Um, from now, um, what do they know now? That's a really important question, and I would I would ask each of you to ask this of your users. When you're looking for this stuff, what's in your mind? How do you how do you start? Where do you go from? They might say, "I would go and type in a few words." Then ask them what the few words are, because that's gold. That's telling you exactly what their starting place is for finding your information and how you're going to use those words later. To Organize your information. Remember, that's where we're going. We're going to create an info model next that not only represents a cool car, 
but figures out how we're going to organize our cool cars so that people can find them. They can get to the cool car they're looking for. Okay, I think I don't want to bore you with going through this stuff. Um, I think you can read it yourselves, and I want to um, I want to just have it there so that you know that it's there, and that you you know that before you go to these major three sections of the things you're going to buy next week, that you know exactly that you have a starting place. I don't I don't think that you should ask every one of these questions and make these your questions. I think you should. Listen to your user and you know the directions you need in order to get the most out of your user, but make sure that you take stuff into account and that you're not ignoring it. What I give you in these three slides is a starting place. It's something to go from as you're constructing your um, as you're constructing. All right. So um, I'm going to let you go in a minute, but I want to just go back through what's going on here. I'm just about to break you into teams. Three users and three team members. And everybody in the class is going to be a user for somebody. And everybody in the class is going to be a part of a team. So also, by the way, we're going to put evaluative weight on how good of a user you are. And so that's the, why I do that is because people fail all the time in class projects because their user sucks. Now, if it's your roommate and you thought your roommate was going to come through and then your roommate stepped out on you or they weren't very good at, what, at their job or they didn't show up or, you know, they, you know, they said, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh to every question, right? And you get nothing out of it. So we're going to put some points behind being a user in the class as well as some points behind being a, um, a team member. So that should that should help you, help motivate you guys to be good users as well and give them what they need and show up to the meetings that they ask you to show up to and all that kind of stuff. And as I said before, uh, we have Tuesday, Thursday, 8 10.30, um, and everybody can have those four hours to do this project. Sometimes you're going to be here um, with me working through it. Sometimes you're going to be off with your and actually, that's probably worth saying. Um, how is it going to work? A set of liberals and a liberal control personas. And then um, uh, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at those control personas just like we've been evaluating assignments so far, checklists of things that we look for. And then there's also going to be a time to talk about it. And when you come and talk about it, we're doing a meeting. We're not, uh, um, we're not doing a, an evaluation. You come and we'll ask you questions about it. Why did you make this choice? Why did you make that choice? Remember the questions that you'll always hear are, what were the hard decisions that you had to make, and why did you make them? your time, as you're meeting with your team, jot those things down. Because when you come to the meeting, you will definitely hear that question. What were the hard decisions you made, and why did you make those decisions? And we'll ask you that, and, and we're looking for you to talk about it. That's the major skill that you can carry out, the major verbal skill you can carry out of this class. No what the hard decisions were, and what the criteria were. And the next job interview you go into, they don't ask you that question. You should ask yourself that question. They say, for example, every every interview you ever go to in the whole world is going to say, describe a project you did that did blah, blah, blah. Right? And what most people will do, and it's really boring, and everybody falls asleep while they're doing it, is they literally just say, this is what we did. First we did this, then we did this, then we did this. Then we did that. No information there. Instead say, yeah, you know, in this project, we had these five really tough things that we came across. Number one, this is why it was really tough. We argued about this for a long time. We finally decided that blah, blah, blah. And here's how we did, here's how we decided this. We considered this, it wasn't right. We considered this, it wasn't right. We landed on this one. That's the kind of dialogue that's really different than most people give and also really shows that you're thinking, that you're not just, you know, spouting out what you did. So I really want you to focus on that. When we come, to, when we come together... I'll ask you lots of questions, but that's one I'll ask you. What were the hard things that you came across, and why did you make the choices that you made? So I train you to start thinking that way, and to recognize that when you're in a team, team meeting, it's not about, he said this, I said that, we argued about it. It's about, here's a choice. We have a choice between this and this, and what are the reasons why we should go with A, and what are the reasons why we should go with B. Let's write them all down, and then maybe we'll all see that we're actually in a, better, in, we're actually in a place that, um, that we all agree. So in the last minute, let me give you this um, about the rest of this week. Tuesday and Thursday, that's the schedule. Don't, don't, don't not do the rest of that. Look when you're supposed to be here. And we're going to do pod review. You've already handed in your assignments for your uh, reverse engineer assignments that you did on your own. And when we come together, there's going to be five people. We're going to be sitting in a circle. And each one's going to have a computer like this. And the circles are all going to be all going to be facing each other. And I and the are going to be there. And you're going to present what you came up with. Another design session. And so in this case, it's not your team meeting with us. 
is five random people from the class all presenting their work. So again, be sure to look at the schedule, be sure to cut on time, and all of these review sessions, they carry out the points. So they're well worth your time to, to prepare and deal with. And if you were to prepare, the way to prepare for this week, starting tomorrow, is why did I do what I did, and why is this the right solution to this problem? Where, did I, where, were, they, where were the problems I came up with? Where were the decisions I made? What did I think about when I was making this decision? And why is this a really killer representation of that information? All meetings will have that same kind of idea that we're sitting around and we're talking about it. And the way we'll judge you in those meetings is the quality of your work. But mostly the quality of your work is covered by something we do when you're not there. You look at your work and say, did they cover all the bases? That shit, that, that, those meetings are a chance for you to talk about what you did and describe why you think it's a good thing and for us to have a discussion about it and for you to, for you to learn from the other people in the room. Um, you're welcome on Tuesday and Thursday, if you care to, to, um, to come and watch other people. Like, if maybe you're going on Thursday and you want to see how this goes down, you're more than welcome to hang out and be a part and be a kind of an observer. Okay, good. I'm glad I had that extra time because that was really good stuff to tell you guys. All right, go forth, and we'll see you tomorrow or Thursday.